The separation of privilege principle is one you actually saw probably in grade school when you studied medieval history or in junior high or in high school. Many books have pictures of castles. And if you look at the castles, there's a lot of walls and a moat there. There's a moat, then there's the main wall, then there's the inner wall, then there's the keep, then there's the dunge dungeon. And the dungeon in this context is the most secure part of the cat palace, or rather of the castle. So for an attacker to get in, they first have to cross the moat, then breach the outer wall, then breach the inner wall, then get to the keep. That's an example of separation of privilege, sometimes known as defense in depth. In order to perform a certain task, you have to meet multiple criteria, not just one. You also see this if you work for a company that um, writes checks for a lot of money. Even though you may never get one, you'll often see in the check two lines for signatures and something underneath which says two signatures required if more than $100,000 or something like that. That's another example of separation of privilege. In order to cash the check, thereby obtaining $100,000 from the company, two people have to approve it, not just one. And actually, that would be called separation of duty. It's the same principle, but it's applied in, in a commercial context. And it requires two people to approve something. Okay, now, if you've got a Linux manual handy, handy um, go look at the S manual page for SU. SU stands for Substitute User. And essentially what it does is you type SU and the name of the user. It will then prompt you for the user's password. You enter it, and then you're running with the privilege of the user. Now, if you're doing this for root or admin, that gives you all sorts of privileges. So Linux systems and many of the BSD, system, the BSD systems as well uh, use um, separation of privilege to to enable people to become root using SU. The question is how. So go ahead and look at the manual page for 30 seconds, and then we'll come back and talk about it. Okay. If you go to the manual page, you when you look, you'll see you have first of all have to know the root password, clearly. But the second thing is you have to be in the wheel group. That's the group with GID zero. So simply knowing the password is not enough. You also have to be in that group. That's an example of separation of privilege because two, two um, constraints must be satisfied. First, the password. Second, the group membership.